Alrighty guys, I'm gonna show you, uh, this is a video to give you an idea of how to get to the Walmart Distribution Center in Riverside, California. Uh, located on Columbia Avenue. Um, I'm coming from, I actually, I'm southbound on Interstate 215 here, just a little bit south of Interstate 10 at the moment. Uh, you can see the RV, uh, the big RV uh, sells lot right here on the right side. Uh, just getting into the Grand Terrace area now. Uh, there are a few exits you can use to get over there. There's uh, not really a wrong way or right way or whatever. Uh, I personally like to use the Iowa Avenue exit, which you're going to see here. Um, you can also use the, the two exits right after Iowa Avenue. The first one after Iowa is Center Street. And uh, the, the second one after uh, second one down is uh, Columbia Avenue. And then right after Columbia Avenue is the 91, 60, and 215 freeway interchange. Um, now, the, um, the D.C. is right off of Columbia Avenue, so the simple way would be to go ahead and go straight down to Columbia and uh, deal with that, the funky off-ramp there and then make a left turn onto Columbia and then just follow Columbia up to where the D.C. is. But um, I, especially this time of day when I'm going through here, um, it's, yeah, now as you see, I already had some traffic to deal with. When I was looking at my Google Maps, I saw evidence that there was, there were traffic delays actually between, uh, Iowa Avenue and, uh, 215, 60, and 91 interchange, or as we call it locally, the Riverside interchange. So, it's more reason why I like to use Iowa Street myself. Now, I'm more local, I'm local to this area, so I, I, I think this, uh, um, I know in the area more uh, personally. Now, for many years, I've gone through this area with my uh, with my personal vehicle. So, um, I think the insight there can help you, some of you guys out who are not really uh, who are not at all or not so familiar with Southern Cal. And uh, maybe you have a load going here, and you, you know you need some uh, like some advice or some tips on what to look, what to expect, what to look for, things like that. Okay, coming up right here is the Iowa exit. Uh, I'm, I'm in the exit only lane. Now notice there is the railroad crossing right here. Two sets of tracks. Or, well, yeah, the three sets actually. Uh, yeah, that's when you know you're getting real close to the exit here. As you see, it's only another quarter mile or so. And here's the Iowa Avenue exit. It'll be a clover leaf off ramp. So we're going to need to make a right turn. And we're going to cross over the freeway over here. Okay, I'm trying to keep my tandems in my in the right turn lane and not on the shoulder. Um, so you see, I'm straddling the line there. Why I do this, even though I have room on the shoulder, is because you don't know what kind of crap is in the shoulder where traffic is not normally traveling. So I don't want to be picking up debris on my tires. So you know, even though uh, even though there's room to, where I don't have to worry about hitting anything over there, yeah, I still don't want to be running over stuff that could put holes. Uh, could cause me to need a tire repair or something so yeah that's why I do that okay you get across the freeway here you hit this green this light right here you're gonna make a right turn and because basically what I just what I just came off of is Lockadena Avenue and this is actually Iowa Avenue right here so we're gonna just follow this uh, down uh, a couple miles or so uh, you're gonna see now we're going to cross Center Street, which is actually one of the other two exits that you can use. And I'll, I'll get to why I don't use Center Street if I'm going to cross Center Street anyway in a second here. Okay, you see we're paralleling the northbound, we're right along the northbound side of the 215 here now, but we're going south at this point. Now I have the light here. Then uh, you'll have, we'll curve off to the left here, as you see uh, coming up ahead. There's a left curve, and then the next slide after that is Center Street or Center Avenue, whatever. It's Center though. Uh, Center does have an interchange with the 215, but it's a uh, it's a kind of a funky one as well, and it's not the most truck friendly um, intersections over there. So. Uh, 
I'll take that way on certain occasions, but more often than not, I'll stay away from that particular exit. Between the Iowa Center and Columbia exits, I, I would say Center is the last one I would want to use. Uh, you have a, well, it's, I mean, you have a right turn, and then you have another, like a, the road curves to the right after you uh, get past the intersection there on uh, La Cadena West. And... And then you have an, a tight right turn to get onto the, basically on the center, which crosses over the freeway. So it's, it's just, yeah, it's not the most truck friendly street in the world. You're, it's truck legal. You can do it and okay, but it's, it's a little more hassle than uh, just using Iowa Street or Iowa Avenue, whatever. Okay, as you see here, this is the center, and uh, right here is the Chevron Station, whatever. And now, see where this truck is pulling out of? There's a burger joint over here. So if you need a place to park nearby that, yeah, you know, say you want to be close by, that's one of your options. Uh, the burger joint over here, what's it, Zorba's, if I remember right? Uh, they do have truck parking there. So uh, you won't, I don't think you'll be able to see it from the dash cam view here. But yeah, is it Zorba's? Yeah, I think it is Zorba's. Yeah, so right here you can you can park in this lot here, and uh, if you want to, you know, somewhere real close by and just wait it out to your appointment time. And uh, speaking of, when you do get to the DC, it's like a typical Walmart as far as appointment times are concerned. If you're a live unload, don't plan on showing up any more than an hour before your appointment time. Okay, we're, gonna, we're crossing over the railroad tracks now. It's the main line that goes down from uh, San Bernardino area you know, over toward uh, like Long Beach and yeah, uh, basically Orange County area. Okay, there'll be a left turn coming up. Uh, two, I think it's two more traffic lights after this. This is orange. If you're looking at a map, this might help. Or yeah, I think it's orange or citrus, whatever. I forget the name of the street. It's one of those, one of those two. Okay, and then the first light up here after you get to the bottom of the hill is Palmerita Avenue. Go through it, and then the very next light down will be Columbia. I'm gonna make a left turn up here. You know you're at the right spot because, uh, well, for one, when you're coming up, you'll see this big, huge park over here. This is called Hunter Park. Uh, it's actually a nice park. It's a big, uh, it's a big park. On um, actually, if you're in the area and have a chance on uh, certain Sundays, oh, it's I think the fourth Sunday of every month, they have uh, like a model railroad that actually goes around the park, yeah, and you can ride on it. It's uh, I forget what scale it is. It's one of those small ones where you can just kind of ride around the park, though. Okay, well, as you see here, we're going to make this is going to be a left turn on the Columbia Avenue now. And then when you get on to Columbia, I'm going to need to get into the right, uh, the, the left, the left lane in a minute here. And then the DC will be on the left side right after a set of railroad tracks. Okay, you see here there's a truck parked in the center turn lane. Uh, I don't know that that's a really wise spot to park in because you see here there's a uh, there is a driveway there, so some people might be might want to use that lane to get into and out of these uh, these local uh, lots over here. So I don't think it's a good idea to be parked there for very long. It, it's, it might be one thing if you're waiting for a dock door or something nearby and you know, maybe you, know, you already checked in or something but or at one of these DCs. But okay, now right after you cross the railroad tracks, this left turn pocket right here is where you're going to want to go to get into the Walmart DC. You can also notice the sign right here. Yeah, that'll tell you that it's Walmart receiving. Or actually, lineage logistics or lineage logistics, however you want to pronounce it. Doesn't I really don't care. Okay, get in the lot. It'll be a right turn. 
go around the east side of the building here. Now there, there's going to be two lanes on the entrance side of the yard shack. It doesn't matter which lane you use. You can use either uh, both lanes. That's definitely not a typical Walmart DC as far as how it's set up. So um, don't expect to encounter some uh, like a, a, a normal huge Walmart DC that's got a huge uh, like access, uh, truck access road and whatever. Uh, it's actually pretty tight. Okay, so, of course, right here is the, the guard shack. You're going to check in, and, uh, and I'll, I'll skip ahead here in a second. You'll see the, the page flip. Okay, now, uh, in a minute here, I'm going to follow this Prince truck around the other side of the building. the dock doors that they'll have OTR trucks going into will be on the other on the opposite side of the building. So this is the 100 row here with the doors and then and it's usually the dedicated three truckers here as you see uh, you see our England trucks are up. And the other side of the building will be the 200 way. Also, the shipping and receiving office will be on the other side of the building as well. And you'll we'll get to that later on at the end of the video because I will park right in front of it and you'll see me actually walking into the building where it's at. So, you know, have a really good, you have a really good idea of what to expect when you're at this facility. Uh, if you've never been here before and you get a little coming. Right here in front of me, uh, in front of you here, is a mirror you can use to, to see around the corner to see what uh, if there are any trucks coming the opposite direction. Use this to your advantage, and if you do need to, because you can see them coming, stop early before that limit line there so uh, they can get through, so they can make their turn more easily. We're going around the north end of the building now on the Palmerita Avenue side of it. drop the trailer in front of the door. I don't actually put it into the door. I actually leave my doors closed and drop in front of it. Normally when I come here, these, uh, these, these spots are all full of uh, bobtails or trailers. This is a really good time of day. Uh, nice. Usually there's a whole time. bunch of trucks here. Sitting. Probably need to wait for his Prince driver to finish this packing before I can set up. I'm in this door right here to the left of me. Now I'm going to need some of his space for my setup, so I'm going to wait. So the only thing I need to do really was uh, just put it in front of the door and then remove my, uh, my padlock from it. And bob till over to and check in. Uh, the yard dog will actually take care of uh, checking the seal or, or whatever, opening the doors and backing it into the dock door. 
not sure why they do it that way here, but they do. Coming in here, I, I, I was trying to catch the trailer because the tandems were too far off to the the side side of the door. So I was trying to get them to, if I just pulled it, push the trailer straight back, and I'm at an angle like this, the trailer, the, the tandems will get to the center of the door like I want them to. So that's why you see me uh, chasing it down for a second. Because I, I wasn't centered in the space, spot yet. So I just needed a little bit everybody. there. And you see, I'm, I steer right, but not. I'm not steering too heavily to the right. I'm yeah, just maybe about half, yeah, like one turn instead of two full turns. Okay, now, uh, max right is two full turns from center. That's something else to want to be aware of if you're a newer driver learning to how to back. Um, I've always said if you don't know where your steer tires are pointing, and if you have to look outside the door, outside the truck to know where they're at, you're not paying any attention at all to what you're doing with your steering wheel, or you're uh, you're not keeping a consistent like you're, you're handing a consistent spot on the steering wheel. Should only have one hand on the steering wheel. Keep it on the same part of the steering wheel, and you always know where uh, how far you've turned it uh, when you do it that way too. Uh, you know, like I say, I always say with these backings, I'm trying to um, adjust steer only half as much. And for half as long as you think that you need to, because when you have the trailer offset, off tracking like this, the trailer will develop its own rotation. If, you, if you're just steering straight and you're pushing it back, the trailer is going to off track more and more. And the more it off tracks, the more uh, more heavily it'll rotate for you as well, and the more slowly it'll roll for you. So you don't have to keep steering all the time. Just put just enough in to give the trailer something to work with, and then let the trailer do its own work. Don't keep putting a max steering effort in all the time. Just, you know, nice controlled, not not excessive amount and not excessive length of time with the steering inputs here, okay? Watch my drive now. All I need is to put... Okay. As you see here, my, my tandems are right on the line, or, or just about on the line, maybe just a hair off, but nothing to be concerned about. Now, all I care about here is just get the trailer uh, squared up with the line, and that's it. A lot of times on what I do is I'll look at my uh, my flat mirror or my convex and I'll see where my drive tires are at because wherever my drive tires are at tells me where the front of the trailer is. Um, but you got to be careful of that because uh, as, this is how I learned it, it was uh, when I was a newer driver. Um, when you're looking in the flat mirror particularly, you might see your, the side of your trailer and see that it looks like it's lined up perfectly with the spot but you'll find that it's not actually lined up right because the way the angle of the, the mirror is angled or uh, points at an angle, whatever the when it's actually squared up uh, right is not necessarily squared up in reality. So it's, it's an optical illusion when you're looking in your mirror. So this is one of the advantages of looking out the door, um, like sticking your head out the window and actually looking. Now you can keep an eye, uh, keep an idea of where your drive tires are at too. Like I said, cause, you don't want to let your drive tires overshoot that line. If your tire, if your tandems are already right on the line, don't let your your drive tires go shooting too far past the line. If they are, then uh, stop, pull forward and hard right, and so it gives your trailer your tractor a chance to catch back up to your trailer. 
Just want your tandems right here in the center of the spot. You don't want to drag them away from there. If you keep trying to push back, if I keep coming back like that and, uh, you know, coming backward when I know the, tri the drive tires can't line up, all I'm going to do is cause the tandems to veer off in this direction, which I don't want. The tandems are already there. I want to keep them there. So just go just enough to overshoot a little bit, not by much at all, and then go hard right forward to square the tractor back up with the trailer. And then you can do a couple of these moves, whatever it takes. You know, the more you keep these tandems right where they already are, if you already have them uh, well placed, then keep them there. Don't make any kind of moves that's going to cause them to drag off in uh, either direction. It doesn't matter if you're pulling forward or pulling or pushing back. You know, the more you, uh, you know, your tandems are already centered. Um, if your drive tires go off track and from there in any uh, either direction, forward or backward, your tandems are going to do the same thing or go or well. They're going to do the same thing if you're going forward, but they'll go the opposite way if you're going backward. So keep that in mind if you're a novice, uh, uh, yeah, if you're a new, uh, new trucker and you're wanting to learn some backing skills here, okay? So that's part of why I did this as well, not to mention uh, to show you right, in the middle of the spot. Because it's common uh, uh, to get to right a, there. a facility that you're not familiar with. You're not really sure what the, the, the tandem's where I need them to be. and. Uh, yeah. Let's start doing some more of these uh, videos here. I think we're on the this specifically on the nice. customer's so, location. Uh, and right there. Give you an idea how to get there just for just a few miles and then show what the actual facility's like right and, there. You know, in person. So you can't really quite get that view uh, always so easily with, uh, say, with Google Maps yeah, or you know, the satellite view or whatever. Back more into it first. It ended, uh, uh, at least unbind the trailer so I can pull the fifth row latch. Okay, this will fast forward here in a second. I'm not going to have it sitting here watching the watching the trailers in front of me while I'm disconnecting. So, all right, now we're disconnected. Yeah, I'm going to go over to the head over to where the receiving, area receiving, area receiving office is. Check in and I'm done. Even if it's a longer way around, it's uh, well to get around to it. It's a shorter trip. So when you get inside the door, though, there are three windows over here on this side of the building. Um, you want to go to the very last one over on the far left end of it, the one that's closest to this north wall. Uh, that's where you want to go if you're an OTR driver. If you're a Walmart dedicated fleet driver with uh, with CR England. There are a couple of other doors. The middle and the right door uh, windows are the ones you want to go to. Um, usually, the, usually the middle one, but sometimes it's the right side. And actually this sign here even says that. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching there. This is, uh, that's the end of this video.